What's up, YouTube? In today's video, we're going to be covering the basic computer exploitation module on TriHackMe. This will be a four part series. So, in the first video, we're going to be covering Vulnerability, the second one, basic pen testing, then Kenobi, and then lastly, Steel Mountain. Steel Mountain unfortunately requires a VIP membership, which will be about $10 a month or $8 if you're a student. So, Vulnerability, let's go to this next tab. We're going to learn about active reconnaissance web app attacks and privilege escalation. So let's go ahead and start our VPN. We're going to connect to the TriHackMe platform via OpenVPN. So we'll just do sudo open, open VPN. Then my VPN configuration file, it will require sudo. And then once you see the initialization sequence completed, that's when we know you're connected. And just to double check, let's show an if config ton zero. And this is our IP address on the try hacking platform. So we have 10.6.31.16. Back over to this page. We'll go ahead and start the VM. This will take about a minute to spin up. Connect to our network and deploy this machine. Completed. We're just waiting for this to start. Okay, task number two. We're going to perform Reconnaissance using Nmap. Nmap is a popular network scanning tool or network mapper. It's an open source tool used by a lot of IT professionals. So it says or it shows a bunch of Nmap flags that we can select from to, to add into our scan. But for this machine, we're just going to run Nmap-SV. This is what they're suggesting us to run. So this is what we'll run. And then these are the questions that we need to answer. Let's go ahead and open up a tab for a new terminal. And to run this, let me go ahead and zoom in for you guys. So first we'll start with nmap-sv-pn, which will be no host lookup or no host discovery, which is explained right here in the description. Let's go back and then we'll specify the IP, which is 10.10.237.107, and then we'll output it to thm vulnerability. It'll just output in all formats the scan output. For for the sake of time, though, we have we I ran the scan right before the video started. So the output we have one, two, three four, five, six open ports. Okay, go ahead and complete this. Scan the box, there were six open ports. What version of Squid Proxy is running? Let's look over here. So Squid HTT Proxy running on port 3128 is version 3512. Go ahead and copy that, paste it over here. How many ports will Nmap scan if the flag is dash p dash 400. So this will scan for 400 ports. Using the nmap flag dash n, what will it not resolve? So the dash n flag won't resolve DNS. Let's go ahead and enter that there. What is the most likely operating system this machine is running? So we did not specify OS discovery, but we do see over here it's running Ubuntu showing Ubuntu here, Ubuntu Linux, Ubuntu for the Apache server running on here. So let's go ahead and guess Ubuntu. Perfect. And what port is the web server running on? So over here we see it's running on port 3333. And then it's important to ensure you're always doing your reconnaissance thoroughly before progressing. Yep, complete. Let's go to task number three. So we're going to utilize GoBuster to basically brute force the directories on the HTTP or Apache server. And if you do not have GoBuster, you can just run this command in the terminal and then it'll install GoBuster. So for this example, it tells us to run GoBuster dir u and then the HTTP server. And then we'll specify a word list with the dash w option. Okay, so I had to go ahead and restart the box just because it was having issues loading up the web server. So we have a new IP, 
enter that into the URL and then specify the port that the HTTP server is running on, which is going to be 3333. And we'll be using GoBuster. So back on our terminal, we'll do GoBuster dir dash u. Dir was will specify scanning for the directories and then the dash u will specify the HTTP server, the URL. Back, let's go ahead and paste it. And then dash w to specify the word list, which in this case, we'll just do user share word list. Um, let's do Durbuster and then directory three medium. So we're just going to select the directory list 2.3 dash medium text file. And now we're scanning. Let's go ahead and complete. Okay, so here is the GoBuster scan, GoBuster dir dash u. This is going to scan for directories and it's the dash u specifies the URL that we're scanning. Dash w specifies the word list. So in this one, we're just going to use a word list located locally on our Kali machine. So directory list dash 2.3 dash medium. And here are the directories that it's found so far. Images, CSS, JS, these aren't anything um, that stands out. Dash fonts, dash internal or slash internal. This looks interesting. Let's go ahead and paste that right here. All right, so we have an upload. We have an upload form page over here. That's going to be on the slash internal page. Right. Next task, task number four. Now that we found a form to upload files, we can leverage this upload and execute our payload that will lead to compromising the web server. What we'll common file type, which you'd want to upload to exploit the server is blocked. Try a couple to find out. Uh, let's see, using Wapalizer. Okay, nothing interesting. Let's try downloading a reverse PHP file. So using this hack tools extension, we'll go over here to PHP reverse shell. It will, t will, will go ahead and download the Pentest Monkeys reverse shell. Here is the source code of what the PHP reverse shell looks like. Go ahead and just download it. Go bust it through an error. We'll go ahead and just close that. And then we'll copy the reverse shell PHP file from our downloads folder to our vulnerability folder. So we'll go ahead and copy downloads reverse shell for PHP. Specify the period to copy to our local directory. Now we have the file right over here. Let's go ahead and change the name from reverse shell PHP to just rev shell.php. And then we'll go ahead and try to upload the file. Try hack me, university, rev shell PHP. Let's go ahead and see if this fails. So we'll go ahead and answer that PHP is usually the file that we'll, we'll want to try and upload. And then we can utilize Burp Suite to fuzz the upload form just to see, um, just to see which file extension is allowed through. We finally show that extension is not allowed, so the PHP extension is not allowed. And we can utilize Burp Suite. So let's go ahead and create the word list here. We'll use nano php extension.txt. Go ahead and do php.php3.php4.php5 .php and .phtml. All right, perfect. Let's go ahead and open up Burp Suite. We'll be using the community edition. We'll go ahead and ignore this. All right, just start. And if you don't know how to use Burp Suite, I'd, I strongly suggest going to the visiting the Burp Suite room over here. So now we'll turn on the proxy and we'll go ahead and set up Foxy proxy. If you do, if you don't have this up, the Burp Suite room will show you how to set this up. All right, let's go ahead and Upload this rev shell PHP extension again, and we'll see the intercept is on. 
Let's go ahead and submit. Now that we've intercepted the request, we'll want to send it over to Intruder. Then we can just go ahead and turn this off. All right, now clear everything. And then now we want to highlight the .php extension. And we'll go ahead and add attack. We want the sniper attack. We'll go over to payloads. We'll go ahead and load the payload, which will be phpxt.txt. Go ahead and start the attack now. And then we get this little pop-up saying, you know, it, the scan's gonna be a little bit throttled since we're using the community edition of Burp Suite. All right, here we go. Now we started the attack. Um, it shows that, let's look at the response. Extension not allowed. Extension not allowed. Extension not allowed. It shows that none of these are allowed. But usually HT, the PHTML will usually always bypass the extension not allowed. They usually don't block PH, PHTML. So let's go ahead and just for just to test it out, let's go ahead and rename our reverse shell that we have over here to PHTML instead of PHP. So we can just copy ref shell to ref shell that PHTML. Now we'll let's cat the file just to see what it looks like, what the contents are. So over here, we see that we specified our localhost IP, which is 10.6.31.16, which we'll also see up here on the top of the screen, and then the listening port that we're going to set netcat on. So we can just clear that, and then let's go ahead and start our netcat listener to 4444. Now we're listening here. Let's go ahead and upload the PHTML file just to see if it goes through. Let's go ahead and turn off our burp. And let's try again. And submit success. So that file extension is allowed. All right, back over here, run the run this attack. What extension is allowed? We manually tested this and found out that PHTML is allowed. Now we're going to use we're going to use that extension for our pay, payload so we can progress. So you can download the PHP reverse shell here on TryHackMe but it's going to be the same <clears throat> reverse shell that we have here on our hack tools extension, PHP reverse shell, which is the pen test monkeys reverse shell. Then we'll want to edit the, edit the IP. So back over here, let's go ahead and cancel this and just show you guys what to edit. We'll, so we'll run nano rev shell .phtml. and the IP, you'll want to edit this IP with the IP of your tunnel zero adapter. And then we're going to specify the, po the port to listen on. So for this case, we'll be using port 4444. So these are the only two lines that you have to change in this file. Go ahead and save that. Let's go ahead and run netcat again. And then upload your shell, navigate to internal uploads, and then the name of your file. So we'll go ahead and paste that right here. Internal uploads rev shell.phtml enter and then we okay after a while we see that we get a reverse shell back not sure why it took so long but now we can run who am i and we are the ww-data user back over here we'll go ahead and complete this because we we received our connection what is the name of the user who manages the web server let's go ahead and navigate to the home directory so it looks like it's going to be Bill. And then we'll go inside the build directory and we'll see that there is a user.txt file. Let's go ahead and cat that real quick. And this is our user flag. All right, on to task number five. Now we're on the privilege escalation portion of the, of the methodology. So now we're going to look for SUID files and find out which one will stand out. So uh, one thing I like to do is upgrade the shell that we currently have. So back on our hack tools extension, we want to spawn a TTY shell, which is a more stable shell. Let's go ahead and see if this will work. Perfect. So now we have a more stable shell. Go ahead and run this SUID command to locate uh, potential SUID files that we can exploit. Go ahead and paste that. Now it's running. 
So if, if you try to run this command without upgrading to a TTY shell, upgrading the TTY shell, uh, you may notice that it stalls out. So you can always upgrade the TTY shell to get a more stable shell. Um, so on the system, search for SRD files. What file stands out? Mount CIFS, that is a standout. User mount, ping, system, C system CTL, that stands out a little bit. Let's go ahead and see if it's this file. Perfect. So now we can try to escalate our privileges with the bin dash or bin slash system CTL. So what we'll want to do is navigate to gtfo bins.github.io. This is a list of Unix binaries that can be used to bypass local security restrictions in misconfigured systems. So we'll go ahead and select SUID and then control F and then search for system CTL and then click SUID. So we'll run these commands over here. Let's go ahead and copy that. Let's go ahead and just run gedit notes. And then we'll just post that in here in our notepad. All right, perfect. And then from here, we'll run each command one by one. So for the first command that we're going to be running, um, this one is basically we're creating an environmental variable named tf and you can call it whatever you want. So within this command, we create a temporary file. Um, we'll create a temporary file as a system D service unit file. So that's what this command will do. And then from here, the echo service calls the echo command to start echoing the input, which will be this command over here. And then it will change this over here. So this, if we keep this by default, it'll just run the ID command. So over here, we'll want to um, read the root user file within the root directory. So we'll just do a cat slash root slash root.txt. And this is going to save the output of root.txt into TMP output. So this output file, which will be located in our TMP directory. So that's what this command will execute. Install is going to be the second part of our unit file, and the wanted by the wanted by equals multi-user dot target. So this one's going to set the state at which the service will run, and notice the single closing quote over here. So we're closing it out from here and here, and then from there, just to be safe, I like running bin slash systemct instead of the dot. So bin slash system CTL. So the first system CTL command, the, this is going to make our unit file available for our system CTL command, even though it's outside the standard path or search pass. And then this next command over here, this is going to, so this command over here, we're just going to be enabling the unit instance that we created with this. And let's go ahead and run this command within our shell that we have. So tf make temp.service, go ahead and paste that in there. Perfect. Echo service. All right. Type equals one shot. Paste that too. Then the command to execute. All right, and then we'll run install. And the next command, the wanted by. Then we'll create the link using bin system CTL. And then the last command will enable it. And assuming everything went right, we'll go ahead and navigate to the TMP directory. And from here, we see the output file. So we'll head and go ahead and cat it. Like this is the root flag. Let's go ahead and paste it here and submit it. And there we go. We finished the room. All right, on to the next one.